Hey everybody, Jay Barino here. Welcome back. Playing some more Age of Empires 2 Definitive Edition on the Joan of Arc campaign. No shame here on standard difficulty. It's my first campaign in Age of Empires 2. All right, mission two, the Maid of Orléans. So let's check it out. March 26th, Chinon. It is one thing for a band of dispirited soldiers to put their trust in a teenage girl. It is entirely another for that girl to be given command of the army of an entire nation. We were filled with pride when we heard the Dauphin's heralds pronounce Joan the Maid as commander of the army of France. So that she may look like a general, the Dauphin presented Joan with a great war horse and a suit of white armor. Joan instructed me to look for an ancient sword buried beneath the altar of a local church. I was skeptical. But not only did the man unearth a rusted blade, but we found that the sword had belonged to Charlemagne, grandfather of France. I shall not doubt her word again. Still visible on the hilt was the fleur de lis. Joan adopted the fleur de lis as her symbol and had it blazoned upon her battle standard. Wherever Joan goes, the standard goes also. It goes with us to Orléans. The city of Orléans is one of the finest in France. But it is under siege by our enemies, England and Burgundy. It's about to fall. This war has dragged on for 100 years, with precious few French victories. The people of Orléans need a savior. They will receive Joan of Arc. All right, let's see if the loading screen takes as long as it did last time. I think it's just the first time you, yeah, the first time you load up the game, the loading screen takes a while as it loads all those high-res assets into memory, I guess. Joan must survive. The Cathedral of Orléans must survive, must remain standing. Escort Joan to Blois so that she may command the French army. I apologize for my pronunciations. Some I might just get completely wrong. Uh, I like to think of myself as a fairly worldly, learned individual, but these campaigns take place all throughout history, all throughout the world. And uh, I'm just not going to recognize uh, some of the city and place names, set faction names. We'll see. The French army is limited to the Castle Age and a population of 125. Hurry to Orléans before the English can cause much damage. Be wary of English forces south of the river, but do not forget to rendezvous with your army at Blue Wall. Once the supplies arrive in Orléans, you will be able to build up your forces. Frankish knights are useful for taking care of longbowmen and siege weapons. Frankish castles are inexpensive and provide excellent defense. Use your market to trade for resources. English castles have large garrisons. It is best to assemble a large attack force before attempting to storm them. Lots of battering rams. Rich farmland located west of Orléans, but outside of the city walls and vulnerable. Joan and escort are leaving for Orléans. Reinforcements and supplies are waiting for her at Blue Wall. Finally, the army must reach the city of Orléans across the river and relieve the English siege of the city. The English have divided their army, surrounding Orléans from both sides and occupying several castles. To the north is the northern English army, and to the south is the southern English army. You will need to you will need siege equipment to destroy their castles. Oh, I, may, were we going to have to destroy both? I don't know. We'll see. The Burgundians camp to the east. They are not a real threat at first, but left alone, they will train a sizable infantry army. Okay. I am the Duke de Lonson. Okay. Lady. I will proudly ride with you to Orléans. Okay. Uh, I get, I'm going to imagine that these shiny folks are just our heroes and they have to survive. Okay, let's go. So we have knights. Just lots of knights. Is there a difference? Oh, that's scout cavalry. Okay. We can use like, him to, I guess, like, just uh, auto-scout around the map. Or we just stick him with us. We can oh, auto-scout later. Help. The English are coming. We're going. So we have two-handed swordsmen. Will you come with me? Protect the cathedral. Is that... No, that's the monastery. I'm assuming that the cathedral's in the area that we're going to. I don't know. We'll see. Let's just go. Let's just go to where it's telling us to go. How about that? So these are... These are just straight-up knights. Uh, okay, let's go. I was going to say, if they'll engage us one by one, I'll happily take that. This Burgundian rebel shall not stop us. Still sort of getting used to where to click underneath the health bar that I see is depleting in order to 
click on the unit that I properly want to to get them out. I guess I could use the the console as well down here. It would be easier to pick them out. Okay, well, I think that was it. I guess we're here now. Hello, friends. I think this is Blue Wall. The army of France is yours to command. Get back here, you little shit. Okay, so that's Southern English. Okay, well, this is indeed the Southern Army. I think I'm going to try to get in the habit, like, archers are always going to be two. Melee units slash heroes will always be one. Zero of six carts delivered, so we have to bring these. Presumably. On to Orléans. We need to get some supplies. Pass the I'm just going to go ahead and auto-attack and see which path they take, and then we'll just try to keep these guys close behind. Oh. Get added, please. So where are my carts? Well, they'll figure it out. Let's try to keep these guys relatively close behind. I just want to get into this city as fast as possible. Uh, I don't think there is actually a quick save button, but that's okay. We can uh, we can just make uh, full-on saves. Also, the game auto-saves at reasonable periods of time. Just obviously, I don't want to spend too much time... Uh, so this is the fastest game speed, which I'll probably be playing a lot of the macro sections on. This is like the normal game speed, which I plan on playing uh, any section where I don't have a base on. We'll see. All right, back up here, friends. Okay, now turn and fight. So are these the... I think these are the Burgundians. We should be able to burn this down, no problem. It is attacking this one guy. We could always just run him away and force it to target something else. Like an archer, which is actually a little bit more valuable. We can't heal these guys unless we had monks. There we go. I'm not sure how necessary it was to actually destroy that, unfortunately. But now it's gone, so there's that. Okay, and let's keep going with the carts. Let's just stay together and move up with the carts. This is a pretty nice army that we that we picked up here, so I'm not too concerned. Just leave that alone, dude. Pretty nice army that we picked up here. Uh, and then presumably we'll be able to build more. I'm assuming that these carts will give us resources when we arrive, though I can't be sure how exactly it'll work. It might just give us resources simply by arriving in the city in the first place. So we already have two-handed swordsmen. This is like the tier three swords guy. Like, you can kind of see him here. I think it goes man-at-arms and then, like, normal, like, not swordsmen. I don't know what they're called. Oh, here we are. And then there's, uh, and then there's the two-handed swordsman. I think that's as high as it goes, but I'm not sure. All right, so let's get these up here. Let's get inside the city, please. Here we are. So, where's my town hall? I have no resources. I do have some workers. I guess let's just start cutting down trees for now. So, it also... Didn't it say... Rich farmland is located west of Orléans, but outside of the city walls and vulnerable. Okay, so let's uh, let's just get our... Uh, jean has brought us supplies. Now we can muster the forces we need to raise one of the English castles. So we've got plenty of guard towers. It's revealing to me where the castles are. Interesting. Uh, it's probably worth looking around. Let's maybe sacrifice our scout cavalry if he's still alive. I don't see him in here. I think he's dead. Every mission, I think you start with a scout cavalry, and they uh, they have the auto scout ability, which is really nice. Okay, so this is my. Let's just take like a group of these guys. Not too many of them. See, this is where. Okay, so now I have an actual base. It's actually quite large. Let's go and look for that farmland because we're gonna need some food. I mean, I have a lot of food saved up, but still. Um. There's the cathedral that we need to protect. Here's our blacksmith. I was advised to get fletching a lot, so let's make sure we do that. In fact, uh, we can afford most of these level 1 upgrades, so let's do it. 
And let's see, where are those? There they are. Okay, there they go. So these are all houses, I think. This is the archery range. Where's my barracks? There's another blacksmith. I guess I could uh, cancel... S oh, now, now where was that? Nah, we'll just go with fletching for now. I was going to say, I can, I can split up what I'm researching at what place. Okay, that's fine. Okay, here we go. So maybe we're gonna, maybe we just build a guard tower out here. We have we did get a lot of stone to do that. So let's um, oui. let's grab all these folks and bring them over here. Sure. Random English tower there. Let's turn on reseeding straight away. So these are farms. This is one of the this is one of the more persistent ways to gain food in like the mid to late game. Uh, you have to spend wood to reseed them, and then obviously we need to be able to to harvest wood. So I'm gonna just go ahead and grab workers. I think we can grab wheelbarrow straight away, and then queue up workers, and then rally them over here. And as they they come over here, we'll put them onto the onto the farms. Because they did mention that like this area is uh, vulnerable so we can leave these knights out here obviously this whole area is surrounded with guard towers the guard towers are, are pretty strong they're hard to break down but they do like minimal damage over a long period of time and then you can actually load archers into them and they'll shoot more projectiles you might be able to load other stuff into them to increase the damage they do per projectile i'm not sure about that all i know for sure is that you can load units inside of them uh archers inside of them to increase the number of projectiles that they shoot Okay, so I, I would prefer to have food, so you go here and you go here. Just return your lumber. Cool, so I, I don't think I can go to a... Oh no, I'm in the feudal age, so we want to try to get to... Um, we need to get to the castle age and then get a siege workshop like as soon as possible. Now, then we also have to pick which base we want to go for. Which I can just continue scouting around with. Or I can make a scout cavalry, which might be a little cheaper than wasting a night. I don't n know what most of these buildings are. Like, this is obviously the stable. That's all I really know at this point. Okay, defensive force, get down there. That's Burgundy, which apparently is to the east. Probably more guys here defending than I necessarily need. Okay, and I think, I because I had wheelbarrow queued up. I can I can buy, I have plenty of gold, so I can buy some food. And then here come the villagers. I'm just gonna get more villagers. We have, I mean, we already have the max of uh, food supply, which is really nice. And let's just try to get all of these farms with workers on them for now. Okay, and then you over here. It's kind of hard to tell which worker is on which farm. I mean, I realize that's kind of a silly thing to complain about, complain about but to be fair, I, I genuinely can't tell. And again, we'll get better at this as time goes on. I'm going to go ahead and bump up the game speed to as high as it'll go for now. Okay. And again, let's just get all these farms saturated. I think this one has... Yeah, this one has a worker on it. That one does too. So it will send you down there. Right, right there, I guess. Okay, so we could go to we can go from militia to man at arms. We could also reduce the cost of food for those. I mean, honestly, I'm more concerned about just getting up to uh, the castle age, which is just a butt ton of food. So I'm just gonna get a bunch more villagers. That's the way to go every time. Always villagers. Okay, I don't actually need lumber. Let's just send you over, the, over to the farms. Okay, and these are reseeding, right? So you can turn them on so that they're automatically going to reseed. That's all well and good. Uh, so let's just just keep getting workers, and then eventually, once all the farms are saturated, we'll go ahead and uh, and save up to get enough food for the uh, the castle age. I could also just sell my gold. You don't really need much gold early, at least. But once we start buying more units, obviously, then we're going to need more gold. 
Okay, so I think that just leaves these three. We could also build more farms in there as well if we wanted to. I don't need lumber. Just wood. I think it's just wood. Okay, right there. Next worker, go here. Hey, guess what, assholes? Now, I think we could probably afford to get a, a monastery set up later. Here's a situation where, again, like, archers aren't going to be able to break these down. They're going to need to get siege weaponry inside the walls in order to do anything, so I'm not too concerned. The game was basically saying, hey, make knights. So, you know, it probably would have been more worthwhile to save my food instead of getting these upgrades. Because uh, then we could have gone to the Castle Age uh, just a little bit earlier. But we're just about ready to start it. I get the impression that you want to get to Cat... Like, Imperial Age maybe is up in the air with how fast you, you go to it. But I think Castle Age is always going to be something you want to get to pretty much as fast as possible. So that you can get that Siege Workshop, etc., etc. But again, food, especially early on, is going to be... Uh, the thing that's in, in highest demand. So I'm actually just going to build even more farms. Though, I mean, I, this is the thing, these are the kind of things I don't know. Like, how many farms do you need to kind of upkeep a, a decently sized civilization at a certain point? You know, that's the stuff I don't really know. So we might want to go, you see, like, upgrade to Cavalier. So you can see, like, these costs are quite high. So we can run these guys outside the wall to snipe siege weaponry. I also, again, I'm definitely interested in making at least one scout cavalry to go and look around. Because I gotta pick one of the castles to go for. Orange is right here. And the castle is right. We basically have to just walk up to it, break the walls, and then just go in there. So I think the key to that is gonna be making enough um Not necessarily militia. I mean militia would be the cheapest, but you make militia and you load them inside battering rams and just break through the walls. I think that's going to be the key. Okay. Okay, and let's like how how much does a does a guard tower cost, for example? Watchtower. We just set one up right here and this should protect pretty much all of our farms. How much did that did that cost for me to queue up there? So it's mostly stone. So like a, you need stone for castles and things like that. Some of these units sort of blend into the... Yeah, this is the first macro mission, so I really expect them to go easy on me. Uh, honestly, this whole area is more confusing than anything else. Okay, so let's go ahead and just continue upgrading our archers, and let's grab some additional workers as well uh, to sit in our base so that we can build up our siege weaponry. I'm not sure. Well, I mean, I have the money, so let's grab. We can research handcart as well. And I'm going to go uh, siege weaponry, and then I'm going to go look for some stone because we want to build a castle. <laughs> and we could pretty much set We could just set it up right here. I'm not sure how. Uh, okay, so it's 488 stone. So why don't you come on up here? I know that I saw some stone up here. So cancel that. And then... You go back on lumber. I'm going to send you up here, and you're going to build... It's Q and then E for the mining camp. All good. Build some more workers. We can always move these up to lumber later. And then this is here that's defending us. I like the little ferns growing up the side, the ivy. Very nice. Okay, so now the rest of you head up here onto stone, and then eventually we're going to need gold. I haven't really scouted around for it yet. Didn't I build a scout cavalry? Half of this is going to be just me trying to figure out where things are around the map. So I'm just going to run around here, and just, just to give me a sense of what there is. That guy might die. We'll see. I think that's just scout cavalry. You know, let him... If he wants to run by us, that's fine. Again, these are relatively cheap. Uh, food and lumber, I have... I'm, you know, Kay. I've got plenty of right now. Okay, so now we want to siege. I think that's obviously going to be military. Let's see. Siege workshop. Unless I already have one and I don't know where it is. I mean, there's, there's not really much open ground here. 
I was gonna put my castle right there. Here, let's put the siege workshop up here. Hopefully stuff doesn't get stuck. Okay, very nice. Yeah, maybe you all can clarify for me how we want to be loading things inside of our, uh... Our castles. There's some gold down there. I was gonna say, as of right now, I don't need much lumber, but actually, I, now I'm starting to burn through it a little bit, so let's just get more villagers. And there's just, like, there's units all over the place, but they can't get inside my my castle area, so I'm not too concerned. It might actually be easier to go for one of the red bases, if only because, like, trying to break through the walls of orange, the castle's right there, so it's gonna be shooting at us while we're trying to break through, which is gonna be challenging. Okay, let's, uh, let's bring you over here to build mining camp there. I have enough for a castle now, which I don't necessarily need, but I'll make it. I feel like the game is telling me to make a castle, so we're going to build it right there. It's going to take him a while. We could just build more workers and just throw them onto the construction. It doesn't cost more money. Get him, worker. Uh, what I may go ahead and do... We can get some of our upgrades while we sit and wait as well. So we want to go cav- Oh, Cavaliers, I think, require Imperial Age. That's why it's grayed out. Husbandry, sure. They go faster. Okay. Uh, the next thing I can do is grab a church, or a, a monastery, rather, so that we can get a, we can get a, a monk out, and he'll auto-heal my stuff out of combat. Seems like that'll always be pretty worth it. Wow, they chased them quite a ways away. I guess, like, I'm not sure if it'd be more worthwhile to build, uh, just a bunch of... Uh, a bunch of stuff around this section. Or we could have built our- we could have built our castle over there, too. Okay, so you- you all head over here to lumber. I guess we'll throw one more of you on gold. Okay, we're looking good in terms of, uh, I think- I think, um workers where they need to be. So just grab a couple monks and we'll send them over here once they're built to just sit on these knights and heal them up out of combat. Otherwise, they're, you know, kind of worthless. Now, again, the question is, like, which base is going to be easier to get into? I'm going to guess... Well, maybe this one down here. I'm assuming my scout cavalry died. Yeah, heal us up here. Um, again, it's just because this is the closest is the only reason that I'm considering it. And the nice thing is they'll they'll keep healing out of combat. It's not like they have mana; they have faith. But that's how they that's how they uh, take enemy units. The healing, I think, is just free. Crop rotation we can't get because it's not the Imperial Age. I kind of just wish those were just straight up grayed out. That would be nicer, I think. So let's see, like, how much do rams cost? They do cost gold, and we're going to want a lot of them, and we're going to want to load them up with stuff. Anti-unit siege weapon, range siege weapon with area of effect attacks. These are both very good against infantry, for example. I don't really care about uh, siege towers. Let's go ahead and start making some of these, and then we're also going to need... See, that's that's mostly gold. I guess let's go ahead and throw some more workers on gold. I should always be hotkeying my town center. I gotta get in the habit of that, so... Let's get a bunch of villagers on gold down here. These guys are getting healed up. Again, I feel like it, it never hurts... ...to just be healing this stuff up. See, like, the, the, I kind of feel like the, uh, the game speed at this point makes the combat sort of unreadable. I think this could be tricky, but if we bust through, basically just bust through this gate. I think we're just going to want to rally to this location, bust through this gate, and then just walk in. Um, we can break down that tower along the way. 
And we can destroy their stables as well so they can't make knights. And then we just make our own knights and then a couple archers, which we have a bunch of already here and ready to go. So from the barracks, if I can find it. The only reason that this one is hard is because, again, you get a base layout where I don't know where anything is. Uh, I don't plan on making anything... Uh, I think this is worth the investment early on, by the way. Uh, is the supplies. Is We want to just load up these, these rams. So let's do that. Again, gold is going to be our major stopper. And as we have, we have a lot of excess food, so we can sell it at the market. For uh, I mean, it's it's going to cost us, but it'll still be worth it. Again, I, I don't know where anything is. There we go. Uh, I could get a trade cart and then trade with Blue Wall. See, like, these are all, like, late game upgrades here. I just want to focus on what we what we really need here. Range melee attack, strong versus infantry, weak versus archers and siege weapon. I'm I just don't I don't. They're che they're relatively cheap. I feel like they're sort of like our like better art. Not, I don't know if they're better, but they seem like archer replacements. I'll build a couple of them. So I'm gonna start making um, militia. To load inside of the battery ram. We are saved. Excuse me? Are we actively... Tra okay, now we're trading again. If you have an ally, you can trade with their marketplaces. Is there one down here, too? And that gets you gold. Again, I'm leaning towards... Yeah, we're just gonna... I think we're gonna break through that. But again, we're gonna need a lot of rams. Because I imagine that they're gonna be able to bust through our rams. Um, and if they're gonna try to break our rams, they're gonna have archers, which is why we're gonna make knights, and then we'll have our own archers as well. So I think that's the key. Crossbowmen, of course. I don't know how I feel about skirmishers. We could get a couple of them, but I would really have to pay attention to using them properly, and I won't. You know, you know I won't, so. Yeah, gold, gold right now is gonna be our major stopper, as I've said a few yeah. times. So let's bring down the rams one by one and then load them up. Keep making more of them. And then where's my where's my marketplace again? I wanna I wanna let's sell. I don't need this stone. I don't need all this food either. There we go. Load me up. They're not gonna be able to get through unless they come with siege weaponry. It's just that simple. So apparently, what one thing you could do is like if you have an enemy that's mostly beaten, then just then just set them to um, friendly. Like, change the diplomacy to friendly and leave their marketplace alive, and then you can trade with their marketplace. Seems funny to me. Okay. Honestly, I like the idea of the scorpion just because it'll... I mean, we can, in theory, kill stuff that's really... F like, I don't know if it goes through the walls or, or not. We could... I mean, we could always experiment. That's kind of the whole point, I think, of playing this right now. Also, I don't know how worthwhile it is to load up these rams. I'm assuming it's worth it, but... Okay. Queue up eight more. There we go. Well, I've got the... I had the money to do it. And then, again, like, right now, I, I could hotkey all my different production. You can't overlap production, which is irritating to me. Let's go ahead and get these uh, remaining upgrades because I can afford them now. Again, once you get your economy up and running, now this is going to be about learning how to spend my run my money properly. I think I have enough crossbowmen with the ones that I have already here, but that's fine. We have to be also very careful with Joan of Arc that we don't actually that her killed. But I don't think there's many... I, I think my, my workers are, you know, doing everything they can do. Uh, I can go ahead and get some Axemen as well. So these are all loaded up. Again, I don't know how worthwhile it is to genuinely load these up or not. Because as they die, I'm not sure if the guys, like, spill out of them or what. Okay. And then these guys, this is no problem. And again, we want to just keep falling back to the monk. I think if they're set... Oh, they're set to aggressive. We want to set them to uh, to defensive. That's why. Just got to keep that in mind. Right. Bonjour. 
Okay, that one's full. And then... See, this is... I, I just don't know how much I realistically need. Cavalry Archer. Mounted Archer. Strong versus slow units at long range. Weak versus elite skirmishers and units at close range. I, I, I don't know. Why don't we just make some of these archers? Or uh, axemen? Just for fun, because they're kind of our special unit. Each faction, they build like their special faction unit out of their castle. So sure, let's make them. And then let's make more knights. I feel like I'm going like super overkill here. But you know what? It's my first... It's my first mission, so let's get crazy. Okay. Very cool. So now, I still probably need to leave some of these guys here. But let's go ahead and bring most of them back. And like, yeah, I'll bring Joan and and this uh, this uh, this other guy. You know, the guy. I'll bring him. Let's go ahead and move forward with everybody that we're building, and let's go ahead and change our our uh, rally point down there. I have a feeling these these throwing axemen aren't going to be that great, so let's just make sure we're saving. Here, you're going to be safety one. Here we go. So see, like we started with these two-handed swordsmen, but if you look at the barracks, um, that's not the barracks. They're just militia, and then you have to upgrade them to men at arms, and then like long swordsmen, I think. Um, Pikemen actually might be excellent. It's just getting all these upgrades along the way. In the meantime. Okay, and I think I've got all the upgrades available to me until we... Oh, no. I was going to say until we get to the Imperial Age, but I guess not. Just got to wait for everyone to get here. And then everybody new that's being created, like from the stables, for example, rally down here. Rally down here. You know the drill. We're going to make spearmen. Okay. And then let's just keep making sure that we're saving over safety. And then we just got to... We just got to hit the... Hit the gate. You guys can ignore that. It's like keeping track of... Oh, that's my trade card. I was going to say, keeping track of all my units that are just sort of around the map. And then archers, and I guess throwing axemen, get in here and cover my battering rams while they're doing their job. I just need to break it down so that I can get in and then destroy the guard tower. And then meanwhile, in the back end of this, I'll keep making more rams. Let's make sure we get in here and stay together. As you can see, the rams do a great job at breaking through these. Since I only need to kill one, uh, one castle, so let's get in there. These guys are just all distracted here. We want to get over back here and just make sure that the, the peasants aren't going to be repairing. And I mean, if they're in there, I can't really see them. They said that these would be extremely well defended. This is not really that. I mean, I'm on standard difficulty. All right, I understand. I could have done this with so much less. I love the look of those buildings collapsing. It's really, really satisfying. Okay, so super overkill, but again, this is the learning experience for me. I realize that I'm on the standard difficulty, but every game has a different difficulty curve. So I need to, again, learn, like, what is too much. I, I, I think the amount of rams that we had was fine, but I think I had, you know, I didn't need to build any other knights. I didn't have to build any other crossbowmen. I didn't have to really upgrade much else except maybe fletching to increase the range of the crossbowmen. But it's just really just getting to that siege weaponry, and I think siege weaponry is sort of your your core in terms of what you need to break an enemy base. So I would say like this four to five to six, like between four and six rams is a good amount to break through a gate, break through some towers, break through a castle. So that's just something to keep in mind. And then we have the extra stuff in the back to ensure that the rams don't get killed 
by like knights that are flooding out and trying to stop them. And in the future, it might also be worth it to just like put one ram on like having six rams instead of attacking one gate, you have six rams each attacking one tile of wall. And maybe you'd get through that faster than the fortified gate. I don't know. Anyway, uh, woohoo. First macro map down. Joan prophesied that she would be wounded at Orléans. Nine of the battle, an arbalest bolt knocked her from her horse. I could not believe our misfortune. But as we carried Joan away from the carnage, the battle was won. Orléans was free. When we entered the city, the entire population cheered us on from windows, rooftops, and city streets. They fired artillery into the night sky and shouted aloud their nickname for Joan, La Pucelle, the Maid of Orléans. Wonderful. Wonderful. Well, after that one, again, I realize I'm on standard, alright? But... It's just, it's that learning curve, trying to understand how much we realistically need to keep this up. And I'm sure there are going to be some difficulty spikes here or there, and we'll learn as we go. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.